Please stand. Let us pray. O God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear Son was laid in the tomb and rested on his holy Sabbath, so we may wait with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. A mortal, born of a woman, few of days and full of trouble, comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are determined and the number of their months is known to you, and you have appointed the bounds that they cannot pass, Look away from them and desist, so that they may enjoy like laborers their days. For there is hope for a tree if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. But mortals die and are laid low. Humans expire, and where are they? As waters fail from a lake and a river wastes away and dries up, so mortals lie down and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not awake or be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until, until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If mortals die, will they live again? All the days of my service I would wait until my release should come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will read together Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my pride and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, Lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my power of strength. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, so as to live for the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join in the same excesses of dissipation, and so they blaspheme. But they will have to give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. 
They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in that place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. For this is the reason the gospel is proclaimed even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the Spirit as God does. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So sometimes uh, when I'm in public or when I'm meeting new people, I try to avoid talking about my work. Um, and at the suggestion of my brother, who's a certified public accountant, I I've just begun to tell people that I'm a CPA, and, and usually there's no follow-up questions to that statement. <laughs> or I guess lie is what you'd call it. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, I don't always want to tell people that I'm a priest, uh, because I find that they either uh, seek validation about themselves and their specific beliefs, or else they look at me a little suspiciously because I, I represent an institution that uh, they don't like or they don't trust. But the reaction that is most exhausting to me uh, comes from people who feel guilty for some reason and have to justify to me why they don't like going to church. And in all honesty, I really don't care. <laughs> You know, one of the more interesting things people will tell me is, um, I'm not religious or anything, I just hope that being a good person is enough. Mm -hmm. To which I always want to say, enough for what? And it's, it's interesting, because these folks who have nothing to do with Christianity are so convinced that I'm some sort of broker in a moral uh, reward and punishment <laughs> system, where, where people go to the good place or they go to the bad place when they die. You know, sins are, are ranked accordingly, and people are, are frightened and manipulated by their fear and the threat of those who, who think that they're going to hell. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I think that this preoccupation with heaven and hell is a distraction from Christianity's plot. Uh -huh. After all, um, what we've been reading N.T. Wright's Surprised by Hope in our book group, and we learn there that Jesus really doesn't say that much about the future life. He's, he's primarily concerned with announcing uh, God's kingdom coming to earth uh, as it is in heaven. And Jesus only really talks about heaven and hell in these abstract parables that, that we should caution ourselves about taking too literally. Paul doesn't even really talk about uh, heaven and hell much in his letters either. And I just think that it's unfortunate how much we speculate uh, about these things. Because in, our, in reality, our faith is about forgiveness and reconciliation and mercy and love. And our faith is about raising the dead. And on Holy Saturday, that's what we reaffirm. We reaffirm the plot of Christianity and proclaim that the only person who goes to hell is Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's right there in the Apostles' Creed. He descended to the dead, and on the third day, he rose again. But I think that that's just about all that we need to know about hell. Mm -hmm. that, that's maybe all we need to know. He descends to the dead. And for 36 hours, Jesus is looking for lost sheep. Uh, those sheep who are longing uh, for his presence. And Jesus is longing for them, too, to visit those who, who live in darkness in the shadow of death. And he longs to set those captives free. First Peter tells us he makes a proclamation to those in prison. Jesus goes to hell to preach. But we're told the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. So what's in the sermon that Jesus preaches in hell? As the eternal word of God, we assume that Jesus preaches himself. He can't bring any greater word than his own self 
his own inescapable presence that, that preaches what Ezekiel foretold. You shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. He reaches down to the dead and raises them up as if to say, I am your God, and out of love for you, I command all who are held behind these gates of hell to come forward. I call all who are sleeping to get up. I didn't create you to be a prisoner. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, work of my hands, you who were, who were created in my image. Let's leave this place, because you're in me and I'm in you, and we cannot be separated. And that's, that's the same sermon that Jesus preaches to us, too, who, who even today remain in, in darkness, in the shadow of death. We who feel as though we're wandering aimless, aimlessly. We who are, are prisoners and victims of abuse and oppression. We who experience shame and unfair expectations. We who are imprisoned by addiction and insecurity and doubt, and especially our fear of death and collapse. To all who are captive to sin and cannot free themselves, Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. He says, to leave the cool, little girl, get up. He says to us, rise from death, and I will give you new life. And so when you feel alone, and when you are revisited by the death of Good Friday and this listlessness of, of Holy Saturday, remember that the one who led Israel out of slavery leads you to new life. He who makes dry bones live, breathes into you his spirit. And he who humbles himself to the point of death on a cross takes the loving presence of God all the way down to the very deepest place that human horror and anguish can go. Mm -hmm. The only person who goes to hell is Jesus, and he descends to raise us up in himself. Death cannot contain him because he holds the keys to death and hell, keys to a door he has unlocked and opened. And all of us who have been buried with him by baptism into death will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Our death is his death. His life is our life. The one who is life itself is now one with you. And where the Lord is, there his shirt servants shall be also. Amen.
sleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.